In last week's video, we asked our viewers if they had any questions for us. And I've got to say, the response has been unprecedented. 36 questions from right across our viewer base. And it's only been two days since we put that question out there. So on today's video, we are going to be doing our own Q&A. And we'll answer every one of the questions that was posed. And because there's so many, we've broken it down into five categories. What are those categories, Sarah? The categories are travel, lifestyle, money, logistics, and quickfire. It's taken her a long time to learn that. <laughs> there was also a bit of a random question, yeah. but we'll do that one at the end because that's going to take a bit of thinking about. Anyway, if you're new here, we're an early retired couple that sold everything we own to travel the world for the next 10 years. Tracking our budget every step of the way. So we're going to head off now to grab some breakfast and answer those first set of questions, which are in the category of travel. Travel. <laughs> <laughs> We're now in a place called Half an Orange. What, what a name for a cafe. I was going to say in Spanish, but Go I on. think it's Naranca en Medio. Naranca en Medio. That's where we are at the moment <laughs> to cover off the travel question. So which are the first questions we're going to be picking off, Sarah? This stopped feeling like a vacation as we left Mexico yeah. City. And the reason for that is we booked a hotel in Mexico City and we were there for a week. So it, it was finite, we didn't have a kitchen. Yeah. We had a front desk to speak to somebody if we needed some. So it felt like a vacation. It yeah. felt more like to me a, you know, when you go away for a, for a long week, a city break, it, that's how it felt. Yeah. Slow travel is operating at a pace that feels right to us. Yeah. Simple as that. Mm -hmm. So we were in Mexico City for a week and I'll be honest, the reason we were there for a week was we were a little bit scared because all the reputation. It's Mexico City. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So we were there for a couple of days thinking, wish we booked this longer. And then we were in Carretero for 19 days. And that was mainly because of friends that we were going to be seeing and they were moving on. It made sense for us to move on around the same time, but probably yeah. in reality, we could have spent longer there. Definitely would have stayed a month, I think, in Carretero. Yeah, and now we're in San Miguel. We've been here for a good few weeks now, actually, and we're here for 52 days. Yeah. That feels mm -hmm. about right yeah. in, in San Miguel. That, that works for me. I'm, I'm thinking, to answer the question, really, I, I think a minimum of a month but if you want to go longer, want to go shorter, we can. I think that slow travel for us will flex to the type of things we're doing. So when we've got a car, yeah. I think we're going to move, move a lot quicker. More. And then looking at this as, are we, do we feel like tourists? I think when we come into a new place, what we're finding so far is initially, we don't know what we're doing and we yeah. feel a little bit like tourists. It doesn't take long. Yeah. For us to be out in Centro going, oh, look at all the tourists. <laughs> we, know where we're, we, we know where we're trying to get to. Today. Too many people ambling about, <laughs> not knowing what they were doing, what they're doing. That was us like a week ago. And then the, the question around expat yeah. community, is it a need to have or a nice to have? What, what's your initial views on that? My initial views is if you're a solo traveller, absolutely. I think that would be a great thing to have when you get somewhere. You can get onto the Facebook group before you arrive here and obviously make friends once you're here. When you're a couple, I guess it's slightly different, isn't it? And when we look at the question around settling in a location, what we found on our travels, when we are in Mexico City, we were on our own. After we left Mexico City, and we were in Coletro and in San Miguel, there is um, a sense of there being an expat community. And we've had many friends that we've been seeing. Yeah. And that's been great because we made some friends who I think are going to be friends for life. I haven't settled as well because we've known people, there's always been something to do and something to do. Again, geek streamers. Let me just pause you there. Geek streamers. That might just be a word to you people, but those guys are kind of superstars in the <laughs> blogging world yeah. of fire and travel. So I'll just put on the bottom uh, the website of their blog, but it's a fantastic blog. And if you're into all things, things like Star Wars, which we're not, it's got lots of interesting <laughs> references there. What's the question, Sarah? The question is, what is your least and your favorite thing about Nomad Life so far? I think the least one is 
fairly easy. I think we're missing our kitchen especially, but maybe a bit of our house as well. I did all the cooking there and we made the kitchen how we wanted it. We had it completely redesigned. If I can find a photo, I'll, I'll put it on the screen now. Yeah. It really was incredible. Now working in Airbnbs and, and places that just aren't your own, it's not the same and it makes cooking at home a chore and laborious where, where before I really enjoyed yeah, it. Yeah, we did it every day. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, you, you what not a chore to you, was it? Okay, and then um, what, uh, what do we like? We definitely like being able to go where we want and do what we want and also seeing different places. So the next question is from Joanne Nardi. Mm -hmm. Have we felt homesick yet? Well, this is an interesting question. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and I think I was the first. We were both in Mexico City, and one morning I woke up, I started thinking about our old cat, and she, she was 19 when she died, and she died in November last year. And I just laid there thinking about her, and I just, I just became really low and I, and I wanted to be back there with her. Obviously she's, she's not around anymore so she can't do that but, but that was a moment of feeling homesick. Another time was I woke up one morning to hear Sarah next to me crying. So what was that all about? No. <laughs> she's, doing it, she's doing it again now. So this is the third time I guess that we felt homesick. Excellent, wonderful. Oh, thanks for that, so, Neil. yeah. Thank you. Cheers, John. <laughs> right. It's normally me that makes Sarah cry. Yeah. <laughs> Travelling with Coast Feet, have you honestly had any thoughts about your old job, boss, colleagues, clients, and had a sense of guilt? <laughs> have you? Uh, <laughs> no. I do think of my old, my old colleagues, and, and some of those are, are friends. So, yes, obviously, I'm keeping in touch with them. But as far as work goes, I can honestly say I haven't missed it or had any guilt. Yeah, and likewise, I've had no sense of guilt at all. So that's a, that's a really interesting question. I'll yeah. thank you for asking it. There's no guilt because, and this is an interesting thing to get into really, as we told our friends what we were planning to do, we're gonna sell everything, we're gonna travel the world. The thing we heard more and more from everybody is, oh, we're so jealous. Do you know what? And this is important for hopefully a lot of you people watching. You can do this, and that's the whole premise for our channel. We want to show people what it's like to travel the world, what the costs are like to travel the world, and that it isn't expensive. And our friends, although they said to us, we're really jealous, they're actually, they're not jealous because they love the lives they've got. They wouldn't change it for a moment. And I think it's just a turn of phrase that people use, oh, I'm really jealous of what you're doing. If they were jealous, they could do exactly yeah. what we're doing and probably do it better than we're doing it. So I have no guilt on that perspective. Leaving the company I worked for, I have no guilt there either. I think there are people there who should have more guilt about the way yeah. that corporates operate these days. That was a really good question. I yeah, like that. Great question. And I think we finished there with the travel yes. questions. Right. We're going to settle the bill. <laughs> I'm going to turn the camera off, find out why Sarah's crying. That should be interesting. <laughs> we interrupt this programming for an important announcement. Turns out Sarah and I have bitten off more than we can chew. Yep. 35, 36, 37, I don't know how many how many uh, questions we got from our viewers. It was a lot, mm. and I'm in the edit at the moment, and looking at this edit is long. <laughs> so we're actually gonna cut this in half. People have said to us, we want you to do two videos a week again, where you're gonna get an extra video bonus, not this Wednesday, but the following Wednesday. Yep. We're gonna do part one of a Q&A today, part two of the Q&A next week. So let's get back into the video because it is a good one. We got some very, very good questions. So we've come to a bar, which I was almost certain yeah. there's no music playing. There's music playing. So I have to do it somewhere else. Doesn't mean I'm not gonna have a beer though. Well, that was an experience. We, we went to a bar specifically from the perspective that it's a roof bar, and we went in there once before by accident and thought, <laughs> the good thing about that place is it's quiet. There's no one there. So it's a great place to do a bit of YouTube. It was quiet apart from pumping music <laughs> And then it dawned on me, midway through our second drink, this place is, 
this is too posh for us. Yeah, it is very posh. And then when I saw the bill, oh my goodness, <laughs> I'll put it on screen. This bar is much better. It's a lot cooler, trendier, Perfect. our kind of place. A Victoria. Cheers. So go on then, Sarah, what's okay. the first question? So again, we've had three questions that are quite similar, so we're going to group them together. But first of all, Asia Overland with Dave. Which bank cards do you use to keep the cost of withdrawals down? How do you deal with ATM fees and banking? How do you deal with banking and ATM fees? Okay, so all very similar questions and fairly straightforward. The only problem with answering this is we're answering this with a UK bias. So I'm going to rattle through it quickly because I know we don't have a lot of UK viewers. So in the UK we've got what are known as the five big banks and there's a really strong market in the UK of challenger banks. So basically we've found that the large banks aren't particularly interested in the complexity of our lifestyle but the challenger banks designed to work around any kind of lifestyle which is great so and the beauty of these is first of all they charge no transaction fees you get the mastercard into bank rate anytime you use the card so when i just paid that ridiculous bill for those beers in that last <laughs> place we got it at the correct price not with a lump on top yeah. because of exchange rates so we try and put as much as we possibly can on cards when we're looking at atms going forwards Basically, we will be looking at using large banks, not going into um, ATMs that are in shops yeah. and things like that, going into big banks, comparing on screen the charges that they have for their ATM withdrawals, getting the lowest rate, and then any time we withdraw, we will withdraw as much money as the ATM yeah. will allow us. And Make those cards allow quite a bit every day don't they 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 do the bank cards yeah. do yeah. so if you're in another country then look at the challenger banks that you've got there i certainly know that in the us if you're us based then there is the Charles, I've, I've Charles, got, Schwab. Charles Schwab, Schwab. Charles. <laughs> so i was answering these keep out of it you but in the us there's Charles Schwab where they charge you no fees even ATM fees, so if, if the local ATM operator mm -hmm. charges, then Charles Schwab um, yeah. give that back to you, so that's good. But if you're in Australia, for example, naming no names, but if there's anyone here that's asking questions from Australia, no idea there, but there you go. So what's the next question, Sarah? So next question, Adam Flanagan. What advice would you give to someone just starting out on their fire journey? Adam, welcome. I was very, very excited to see your question yeah. because the fact that you're in your early 30s and you found fire mm -hmm. oh Quite man <laughs> oh man you you have hit the nail on the head first bit of advice i would give you is don't forget that you found fire because when you learn about it and obviously you have done you you realize that it's it's like the secret source of life. Mm. And when you understand how money really operates, which is what financial independence retire early helps you with, then how, how can you go back on that? So just don't forget it is the first thing I tell you. The second thing I tell you, the most dangerous thing that you can do is get involved in lifestyle inflation. If you can drive a rubbishy car, live in an average house, but Put that money away because you have a dream at some point in the non too distant future if you're doing it as young as you are of traveling the world or doing something else more fulfilling with your life mm -hmm. then that will drive you along and I don't want to push another one of our videos but if you if you look up here there's a video I did that you may have already seen about how I became my own Superman and that's really the answer to you so if you're 30 any decisions you make, think to yourself, what would the 50 year old Adam think of you today? Can I be my own superstar? So that when you're 50, you looking back say, do you know what? The one person I trust and respect and admire more than anyone in the world is Adam Flanagan when he was in his early 30s. That's the advice I'll give you. 
Right, and so not wear your pants on your outside of your trousers. <laughs> so we we'll get on with the next question. She's had, she's had two beers and she starts getting a bit. So Asia uh, Overland with Dave again. Uh, who did you use for insurance and how much was it? Seeing very high quotes for those over 50. And Anelu, do you have any special travel medical insurance? Again, we're going to group those together for you to yeah, answer. There are multiple choices out there, but we settled for Safety Win. And we did a lot of research, I can remember. We did a, yeah. a lot of research. We do have a uh, link which is underneath this video. I don't think you get any benefit from it, but I know that we do. So if you ever do sign up for Safety Wing, if you choose to do it that way, then we'd obviously be very thankful. Uh, but what we liked about Safety Wing, a number of things. First of all, the user experience and interface online is really strong. You don't feel like you're dealing with an insurance company. You feel like you're dealing with somebody who understands the concept of nomad living. You can have a live chat with someone on there. So I've had lots of questions. I'll fire questions across on the live chat and you'll always get a knowledgeable answer, which I like. The cost for both Sarah and I, we're both in our 50s. I know. <laughs> me in my 50s, I know. But me, I'm in the 50s as well. The cost for both of us in UK pounds is 156 uh, a month, that is and that's not including the US. The other thing that I liked about it is that you can switch it on and off. Yeah. So if we go back to the UK, you can just switch, switch it off and then as we leave, switch it back on again. So the flexibility in there was really good and yeah. it's easy. I manage both of our insurance policies together and Sarah doesn't need to know anything about it. She's just kind of linked onto mine. So that's it. So we do have special medical insurance and it also has COVID insurance built in as well, which I think is pretty yeah. useful at the mm -hmm. moment. Okay, is that all of the questions That's on? That's it, all of the questions on finance? the needs. Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant, okay. So we're going to enjoy our beer. So we're going to have a beer and we'll see how much this is. I don't know yet, but I'm guessing it's going to be cheaper than that place. <laughs> You're going to have to wait until next Wednesday. Because we're cutting this Q&A in half because of the size of it. So we're ending this one here and we'll see you with part two of this next Wednesday. On next Saturday, we've got a bit of a special video so come back for that mm -hmm. if you're new here the rest of our stuff's not like this it's more standard vlogging so check out some of those and consider subscribing if you're not new here and you're enjoying this format give us a thumbs up because we'll do more q and a's in future if people like it but you've been watching to go rome we'll see you next saturday bye <laughs>